The 2005 Senior Hurling Championship proved to be one of the best ever, enjoyed by fans of the game at home and across the world. Soon after Cork beat Kilkenny to win in 2004, they set out their stall to win two in a row. With Hurler of the Year Sean O'Gohalpine now installed as captain, the Rebels also got a new manager, John Allen replacing the victorious Don Grady. Allen decided not to change much. All the stars were back in harness, determined to win again. In 2004, Cork had lost a classic Munster final to Waterford. Their first goal in 2005 was to win back their Munster title, and their campaign started with a revenge victory over Waterford in the semi-final. Waiting for them in the final were old enemies Tipperary, back in the big time, and determined to upset the favourites on their home ground, Porky Cueve. The referee Barry Kelly. Band of the Southern Command have been making magnificent music and providing great entertainment make their way off. It's now down to 15 against 15. Cork beaten in last year's final by Waterford. That was a wonderful game. Let's see what happens in 2005. Straight away it's Ben O'Connor trying to set up an attack, having to go very, very deep indeed. Tom Kenny miss hitting it, but still getting it in towards Brian Corcoran. Challenging Philly Marr, comes back out here towards Kieran Murphy. Aware that he might have been hooked, shortened the grip on the stick, and that is just outside. We're right behind the line of the ball, no doubt about it, and uh, Kieran Murphy wasn't complaining. Paul Curran, hand passing it into the centre here. Good hook. Again, it's Brian Corcoran challenging. Comes out here as far as Declan Fanning, wing back for Tipperary. Big one down, touched out there by the centre half back. Ronan Curran comes back in again, and it's Evan. So in Kelly, and Kelly puts it over the bar, punches the air with delight. Quick puck out. Tip will be well aware that Cork do this the whole time. Paul Kelly, big cheer. Who's cheering? It's Tipperary. 3-1. Tip breaking it down once again. Benny Don nicely across once again towards Owen Kelly. Been marked this afternoon by Brian Murphy. He'll prove a handful. He's got a second point. Here comes Ben O'Connor. Well hooked by Dermot Fitzgerald, a man who qualified from UCD during the week. Helped there by Benny Don. Into space, Dermot O'Sullivan coming out for this one. His captain is Sean O'Gohalpine. Had a man to his left-hand side, goes long instead. Down to us, Joe Dean. Touched away there by Evan Corcoran. Back down to Dean. Dean has a chance of putting this one over the bar, which he duly does. It's hell for leather in the park. And Joe Dean has got a second point. Only a point between them. Colin Morrissey left that one behind to Jerry O'Connor. In full flow, he whips it over the bar. Great point from the midfielder. Should have favoured the Tipperary backs, but they're in difficulty again here with Kieran Murphy, surrounded by tip players. Back to Brian Corcoran, recovered, and he drags it over the bar. He's gone down injured again, but he did score his point, and it's five points to four. Again, feeling that shoulder. Out it came to Corcoran that time. It's after he hit that ball away, immediately he went for the shoulder. And I wonder if by any chance, and I'm no medical expert, the shoulder could be in danger of popping out. Ronan Curran takes it really well. That's a couple of very good balls he's caught now. Setting off once again. Tom Kenny letting it run out to Kieran Murphy. Inside towards Jardine! Runs it all the way. It's gone all the way through, I think. Now, did Jardine get a touch? It's immaterial anyway. After 90 minutes, Cork celebrate the opening goal of the match. Here it is, Jared. High ball in. Just watch Jardine. No, he didn't get a touch, but he did enough to break the ball straight into the net from, from Tom Kenny. I think we'll give it to Kieran Murphy, who dropped that ball in. Owen Kelly. 
Very much their leader inside towards Webster who catches it well. Trying to go through. They look for something. They're looking for a penalty. They'll take anything that's going. They've got it. Leon Webster going to the crowd, the core crowd, to say that I can't hear you now. Well, he did really well, Ger. You know, it's the first ball to come in from him. We watch it coming in here. Dermot Sullivan pulled hard and he's still a great catch from him. Brought it down. You know, there wasn't a whole lot in it. Owen Kelly. He scored six goals in the pass for Tipperary in the championship. This is a crucial strike. Saved! Devil of Cusack bats it out as far as Pat Mulcahy. And it's ripped away on a danger as far as John Gardner. Tipperary's great chance has gone a begging. Out to Kieran Murphy. Credited with the goal. On his left-hand side. Take that, he says. A goal and two for Kieran Murphy. Well, it might well have been a Tipperary goal at the other end. Well, I think everything good in the, in the new Cork game. We saw it there, a great save from Donald Cusack, but then they carried the ball up the field, two hand passes, and straight over the bar off its hurl. What a score from Kieran Murphy, and that really lifted the Cork crowd. Again, Fanning coming across, but he's left it behind there to Neil Ronan, who punches the air with delight before the ball, and got over the bar. He was absolutely confident of where it was going to head, and it headed into the city end of Porky Cueve, but perfectly positioned to make it 110 to four points. Cork, the master so far, but another half to go. If Tipperary still have that inner belief, Jerry O'Connor trying to punish them even more emphatically. He's in for a second. Nobody to close him down. And this is a player who can shoot from about 70, 75 metres out. Two shots taken, two points scored, and he's Cork's number nine. That's straight out of the centre here to Jerry O'Connor. Kieran Murphy lobbing it in there, controlled by Declan Fanning with some difficulty, did well, but only out as far as Neil Ronan. Quick little turn around, and the start of the second half is a satisfactory one for Neil Ronan and for Cork. Ken Hogan having an awful lot of work to do to salvage something from this. John Allen will take a lot of the plaudits at the end of the 70 minutes if it uh, continues in its present course. Philly Marr coming out to try and win this one. Helped out there by Paul Kelly. Drops it back in towards Reds. He really makes a great catch. Reds are looking for support. Owen Kelly trying to get the ball outside here towards John Devan. Devan under pressure, drives it in, and he puts it over the bar. Good point by John Devan. Paul Kelly into space, and Tipper looking for a gap as players are making runs to try and outfox the court back. So far, they haven't managed to do so. That's lobbed in, and that's over the bar. Brilliant effort there by Owen Kelly. It's his third point. This time it's John Devan. Suddenly it's all Tipperary. But is it a hopeless case? Devan, brilliant, wonderful score. That's another one, a second for John Devan. There's Timmy McCarthy. This time couldn't take control of that. Paul Kelly instead, and he curses his luck immediately. It's still in play, and Michal Webster has it. Webster still there, no stick. Hand pass to the clear. John Gardner trying to take it. Carroll over the bar. What an impact. John Carroll, the big strong man from Ross Gray, with his first point. And as that ball came in there, Paul Kelly was absolutely cursing his luck for such a bad shot. But Webster made it possible, and Carroll put it over. Beckham Fanning breaking it. Dean has that ball prodded away by Hugh Maloney. Now, Paul Kelly. This is a bit more accurate. Umpires have a good look at it. White flag raised. Paul Kelly's got five points. And the Tipperary fans believe miracles are possible still. Now listen to the tip fans. Paul Kelly, I think, has been the best midfielder on view right throughout the game. Uh, Jerry Connor had a good first half, but Paul Kelly is absolutely superb right through, and especially since half time. And I think him and Owen, you know, are single handedly and really keeping Tipperary in this game. Colin Morrissey 
busy in midfield, he'll work hard. Sean will go help in. first touch wasn't great, under pressure, Gardner's there to help out. John Gardner inside his own 65-metre line, good run away from the man there by Neil Ronan, in between two defenders, this is Ronan, this is classy-looking play, and Ronan puts it over the bar, and he is really pumped up. Good response by Ronan. 117 to 11 point, lovely little step inside here, and there was nothing the markers could do about it. Yeah, Ger Ger that's some bonus since Brian Corkham went off to bring on Neil Run and scored three great points from play since he came on. Had a great National League, didn't play well against Waterford, but you know, coming on there, maybe not as much pressure today. That's Paul Kelly again, and another one. Some exhibition of the second half, another for Paul Kelly. A huge one down, there's space to be covered. Hugh Maloney coming across, great play by the cornerback. A tangle of legs there with Joe Dean, nothing in it really, but the referee says free out. So, in around the house, Tip looking for goals. In towards Redzer, in towards Webster. Webster has it. Everybody's after it, John Carroll's after it, and it's over the line. Tipperary get themselves a goal in a massive pile-up on the line. Possibly Tommy Dunn uh, as well, I'm not sure, Ger. They won't care who scored it. But just watch it again here now as the ball spill loose. Carroll trying to beat Donald O'Cusack. Everybody trying to get the ball out and uh, spot the ball. Miracles are on. John Devan. They've missed a lot of chances in the second half. Cork have dropped off the pace. Reds are O'Grady. Nice ball out to Owen Kelly. Capable of scoring from here. He does. There's still seven minutes to play, you know. And he's got five points. They give it to Sullivan. Spooning it out into space. Left there. Left once again for Paul Kelly to drive it back in. Dangerously in towards Donald Lokuzak's goal. Breaks loose. And it's trickled wide. Could have got in the back of the net. It's wide. And it was Tommy Dunn who had the chance. It was a great opportunity. Danger once again in the cork Olmar area. Donald O'Cusick, let it spill. He should have been punished, but wasn't. It's still 120 to 115. Cork with 34 scoring chances. Tipperary with 35 scoring chances. But it's Cork who have the vital scores on the board. They built up a very good platform for themselves. Relaxed a lot in the second half, which is worrying for the mentors and their fans as Ben O'Connor tries to set up one here, Kieran Murphy going through, and that is lashed high, and it's over the bar. They can celebrate right now. Kieran Murphy from Aaron's own, just in the match about four minutes for John Allen's team, and he makes it 121 to 116. No doubt about it now. The Cork fans can relax a bit. That's the final whistle, and Cork have won the monster title. Victory for the 49th time. John Allen, who took on this huge task, this enormous responsibility from Donald O'Grady. Most people would probably have said, don't try and emulate what Donald did last year. Full-time score here in the 2005 Guinness Monster Hurling Final. Final score, Cork, one goal and 21 points. Tipperary, one goal and 16. Cork are the champions, and Sean O'Gohalpin lifts the Monster Cup. Now he'll be hoping to take the big double, the All-Ireland in September. Cork are champions of Munster. Cork were once again Munster champions, but Kilkenny were the bookies' favourites to regain the Liam McCarthy Cup. In the Leinster semi-final, they annihilated Offaly by a massive 31 points. Facing them in the final were Wexford, who had stunned the hurling world in 2004 when they beat Kilkenny with a last-minute goal. They were given little chance of repeating that victory. But Wexford were old hands at proving the pundits wrong. Plenty of uh, Kilkenny backs there. One of them happens to be Peter Barrett. 
Dantos man coming for one superbly by Dermot Ling, better known as Gizzy Ling. And that is sent straight over the crossbar. Wonderful point by right half forward Paul Carley, who's been involved in that earlier switch into the uh, full forward line. A diagonal run is being provided by Michael Jacob. Despite being well marked right along the sideline, Jacob sends it over the bar. Well, the experts all said this was going to be easy for Kilkenny. Let me tell you, the Leinster champions are going to really fight for this title to retain it all the way. Great score by Michael Jacob. Well, Wexford have a great tradition, Mark, against Kilkenny. You know, and they don't fear them at all, and they come up here full of heart today. It's early in the game, but they've made a super start, and they're going to be delighted with that. Kilkenny go back into the attack. Henry Shefflin chasing after this. Stock O'Connor after it. Darrell Ryan stays. Henry Shefflin comes in and crosses it out. Great defending by Keith Rossiter, keeping it off the line. But Henry Shefflin got away so easily from Doc O'Connor. At least there is an amber light, if not a red light, warning that the future could not be bright here. It's an easy run in for Shefflin, right across the face of the goal. Goals for distance, down the middle. Runs all the way down, James Wilde cuts across. Good defending, half blocked, however. And Wexford have the initiative once more. Cutting inside is Michal Jordan. There's a goal here. Wexford doing business. It all started with the block down. The Wexford full forward line have been harassing and chasing everything. Here comes Mitch Jordan. Great finish. Des Martin at the end of it. I think there's been a lot of surprise down in Kilkenny as well that TJ didn't start. But I think that incident in the club uh, game, he still hasn't fully recovered from it. Declan Root pulling on it here. Oh, magnificent by Quigley. And that, oh, that is the most fantastic score. Marty, I think that's one of the best scores I've ever seen in Crow Park. What a piece of skill. What a magnificent piece of skill. Just watch this again. It is just poetry in motion. Oh, Larkin. Cuts inside into the middle. Grabs it on the short and sends it over the bar. That's his second point. Oh, Larkin. Uh, he's shown great leadership at centre forward. You know, the last 10 minutes, he's really been the one that's put the shoulder to the wheel. He won a couple of frees and scored two points on some play. Dropping ball up towards the Wexford half-forward line, didn't come off. Adrian Finlan intercepts here, not for very long. Robbed by Owen Larkin, and Larkin sends that over the bar. He's causing problems for Wexford. He's the only man, really, that's causing trouble for a Wexford defence. But it's Owen Larkin with his third point of the afternoon here in Croke Park. And it's three points between the teams. Yeah, he's doing very well, Marty, as I said earlier, showing great leadership. But I think Wexford are playing too much high ball now into the forwards. Even from the puckouts, Kilkenny are just dropping men back and they're beginning to dominate under high ball. They have to keep the ball low into that small forward line. Well gathered by Peter Barrett. Tommy Welch wanted to be led off quickly. Good run by the Wexford captain. Kilkenny captain lays it off. Fires Connor Phelan. Chance of a point. And that is over the bar. The second man to score from play, but it's created by the Kilkenny captain with an incisive run right through the heart of the Wexford defence. Laid it off to Phelan. Good score. Two points between the teams. Martin Comerford did so well. Out to Henry Shefflin. Trying to cut this in. Well gathered. Richie Power once more. Lays it back for Tommy Welsh. And that's over the bar. First point for Tommy Welch in this Leinster Senior Hurling Final. And the sides are level for the first time in 34 minutes. And Wexford haven't scored in 20... Since the 20th minute, Wexford have failed to score. So a little bit under the cosh for the last 14 minutes. Brian Barry just getting a knock on the head there, but continues on as Wexford go into the attack. Two minutes to be added on at the discretion of the referee, Noel Hickey. Dropping this one into the middle, well gathered by Declan Root, superb. 
hitting it well, and it's curling in towards James McGarry, and it's gone over the bar. For the first time in 14, almost 15 minutes, Wexford get a point, and what a psychological boost it is. Wonderful catch here by Declan Ruth, got away from Owen Larkin. Here comes Richie Powell. Coming through the centre was Derek Ling. And Richie has to go back around midfield and uh, seek out and find JJ Delaney. Tommy Walsh once more. Score of a point in the first half. Goes for a second and it drops over the crossbar. Will Kenny go in front. Young star from Tullerone, five points against Offaly, two points against Wexford. And the feature that Marty made that score was the ball in from JJ Delaney. Most wing backs in that situation would have had a shot themselves, but he had the vision to play the low ball inside. Robin Barry, good ball inside, fires on quickly. Going forward from midfield, Derek Link chasing after him. Quigley hits a beauty. Well, when they talk about Leinster hurling finals, I think they'll talk about Owen Quigley's two points, particularly of Wexford win. The first was magnificent, the second was a different style altogether. Breaking ball, Tommy Watts goes back to Gavin, steps by one challenge. Good takes, uses the short grip and sends that smashingly over the bar. Tommy Walsh is now on three for Kilkenny in this Leinster final. Here come Wexler once more. Paul Carr changes the direction. Des Mike knocks it down for his Redmond Barry in front of the pulse from way out the field. It's over the bar. Former Cistercian College Ross Gray student. He comes with certainly a curriculum vitae that is impressive. Represented Ireland in pole vaulting. Plays football for Wexford. Martin Comerford, fine catch. Gets away from Dermot Lane. Doc O'Connor comes storming out. Switches over the far wing. Fools everybody. Nice play. Rory McCarthy coming through the centre. Uses a short grip and sends it over the bar for his second point in this Leinster final. Breaking ball comes down for us, Richie Power. Fools down a ride, flicks it over to the good other side. Nice little bit of vision. And the finish is not bad either. Over the bar. Michael Kavner is on for James Ryle. Change in the Kilkenny full back line. We've often said in so many uh, few teams around the country when you have a depth of talent. This is going to be a test for Kilkenny's depth of talent, but just watch this. Mitch Jordan, it's a superb point. The only player on the Wexford side from an intermediate club, from Marshallstown. But just watch this, this is a fantastic score. Didn't put it into his hand, well, great, put it over the bar. Great score, Marty Alton. I think the standard of, of scores right through has been phenomenal from both teams, in fairness to Kilkenny as well. Great first time hurling, and um, after hurl, we're not even looking at the goals. Mitch Jordan is one of the more experienced players. He's on the panel since 1995. Here's Owen Larkin, one of the young fellas on the Kilkenny side. Richie Parr, hungry, anxious to get involved. Kilkenny seem to have Wexford exposed here. Comerford, chance, oh, brilliant save. Doc O'Connor, super block by Doc. And I don't think he knew too much about it, to be fair to him, but at least he stood his ground. Comes back again for his Richie Parr, and that's over the bar for his second point. But just watch this again, because there was a real chance. Keep an eye on the Wexford defender with the blue helmet. Owen McCormack, and it was Doc O'Connor. From Kenny, Peter Barrett. Getting it up for his Eddie Brennan. He's playing very far out the field for him. This ball inside for his Comerford. There's a chance here. They're queuing up for Henry. Oh, what a save! What a fantastic save by Damien Fitzhenry. Star goalkeeper 2004. Surely, perhaps a Leinster title saving sequence here. Comerford got inside the cover. He hit a bullet. 
Henry Shefflin. Can't gather it, and once again, it's the industrious Tommy Walsh working so hard. Makes an angle for himself, rarely misses from there, and he hasn't missed on this occasion. Four points for Tommy Walsh. They did it last year, Wexford, almost at the final whistle. Here comes the captain, Michael Jacob. This is the man who did it. Gets round the Kilkenny defence. The ball just seemed to dislodge itself from the hurley and it allowed Jackie Turrell to regain advantage. This is Michael Kavner helping out Turrell. Kilkenny back into the driving seat once more. Long ball, breaking ball, gathered by Shefflin, coming through, has a shot, and once again for Henry. Larkin, stopped by Darren Ryan, second time. And it's Ryan again, Richie Powers waiting for it. Wexford back there now in numbers. The danger reverted, but only just. Referee has blown his whistle, and it's going to be, I would think, a throw ball. But two fantastic saves in this match by Damien Fitzhenry. Henry Shefflin unable to get it up the first time. Ball comes back outside, tries Richie Mullally. Sends it back in, has done this already by scoring a point. It's a breaking ball, and it's there, two against one. And Fitzhenry somehow puts the Kilkenny forwards off, and the ball is gone wide. They're leaving a bit of a charmed life in there, Marty. <laughs> Just watch this again. Ball was not cleared by Doc O'Connor. He had a fresh air here, and the ball rebounded off the boot and wide. Henry Shefflin gathers to his right, his comfort, to his left, his Richie Parr. He uses Parr, chance of a point here. And that squeezes inside the post and over the bar. It's his third point in this Leinster hurling final. Still no sign of DJ being introduced. Plenty of Kilkenny defenders. It's hard to see how Wexler are going to get inside that cover. Comes back outside. They try to create the space. And another foul, this time by Henry Shefflin. Rory Jacob going to take this. And really, it has to be a goal. Three points between the teams. Rory Jacob sends it in. Blocked. Not a bad effort at all. Michael Kavner chases after it. Kavner trying to get there ahead of Rory McCarthy. Rory once more, but it's all over for Wexford. And Leinster belongs to Kilkenny. They win their 62nd Leinster title and a full-time score. Kilkenny 22 points. Wexford goal and 16 points. It's been some year for Peter Barry. Captain James Stevens to the All-Ireland Club title has already captain Kilkenny to the National Hurling League and now he's captain as Kilkenny win their 62nd Leinster title. As Kilkenny closed in on their 29th All-Ireland senior title, elsewhere priorities were so different. No Ulster team has ever won the All-Ireland Hurling Championship. Antrim came closest in 1989 when they reached the final, only to be beaten by Tipperary. In 2005, they were 300 to 1 outsiders to bring the Liam McCarthy Cup north, but first they had to meet down in the Ulster final. Going into today's Ulster hurling final, Antrim manager Dinny Cahill would have been looking for a big improvement from his players after the calamitous performance against New York in the previous round. And in fairness to his men, they did raise their game today. Tony Scullion's early point was followed by an excellent effort from John McIntosh, who was to end the day with seven points to his name. Inside the opening quarter of an hour, Antrim led six points to one, but it wasn't one-way traffic. When Jonathan McCusker pointed for down approaching the half-hour mark, it was Antrim ten points, down seven. Gareth Johnson with a good run to set up the chance. Antrim went in at half-time, 14-9 up, and into the second half, a decisive moment. Carl Stewart started today's match on the bench because of injury, but his goal ten minutes into the second period gave Antrim a cushion. Antrim won 16 to 11 to the good. Scores were exchanged before Antrim settled the issue with a second goal. Stewart was this time the provider, full forward Jim Connolly blasting to the net. 220 to 16 points. John Crossy's downside never gave up and Johnson was unlucky to see his shot very well saved by Damian Quinn in the Antrim goal. And Johnson did pull a late goal back for down. Quinn not quite so assured this time, but at that stage it was too late and Johnson's goal simply gave a more respectable look to the scoreline. 
Antrim have tougher afternoons ahead in Tier 1, whilst Down will now concentrate on Tier 2, the Christie Ring Cup. Final score at Caseman Park, Antrim 222, Down 118. For the first time ever, the Hurling Championship had four quarter-finals. The provincial finalists from Leinster and Munster were joined at the quarter-final stage by four teams who had come through the new qualifier system. Limerick, Waterford, Clare and Galway. First up was the meeting of Wexford and Clare. Wexford were favourites after a fine display against Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Clare were written off as an ageing team, their best days behind them. But only a fool would write off players of the calibre of Shawnee McMahon, Colin Lynch and the Lowen brothers, Brian and Frank. Referee from Clara and County Offaly is the man in charge. Clare playing from left to right with a wind advantage in the opening 35 minutes. Barry Nugent, the selection of him at corner forward was almost anticipated. It was between himself, Andrew Quinn, and Declan O'Rourke from Wolf Tones. And I'm sure that Nugent won't play a corner forward, he's normally wing forward. We we'll see once the game uh, develops some sort of a pattern and exactly where these clear forwards are. Brian O'Connor wearing number eight for Clare. Dermot McMahon. And uh, right half back is David Hoy from St. Joseph's Stewart Barefield. Knocked away by Dara Ryan. Here's Adrian Finland. He looked great first half. I honestly felt it was a vital factor when he departed the scene at midfield in the uh, halftime break. This one is just squeezing inside the post. Wonderful score. Des Mighton just coming across and getting the opening score. Davy Fitz playing in his 54th championship match in his 16th season for Clare. Just the consistency between the posts since he made his uh, appearance in 1989. Barry Newton can't control it. There, have it once more. This one looks a good one, and it's gone straight over the bar. Big Tony Carmody from Ina puts that between the posts. Adrian Finland has gone back to help out his defence here. Hit by a hefty shoulder by Niall Gilligan. Forces him to the error. Tony Griffin lofting this one in. The umpires consults, and it's over the bar. Well, credit as well, Niall Gilligan, because he did the hard work. He put Fenlon off his uh, balance, and you can see it here. Originally, if there was a hefty shoulder on Adrian Fenlon, when he came out to Tony Griffin, took his point well. Colin Lynch from the CKC and Kilmele Fed drops this one in. Dangerous enough ball, goes all the way far as Damien Fitzhenry. And manages to put it down on the surface where Paul Carley left half forward is almost playing as an extra back. Tony Carmody onto the left side and that's a very, very good score by Tony Carmody. Centre half forward doing very well. An All-Ireland College medalist in 1999 along with Jerry Quinn. Yeah, great score and I mean himself and Tony Griffith have got four points between them all. That's an excellent start for clear but notice when Wexford are failing to clear the lines. I mean they're using this short tactic and they're struggling to get the ball past midfield, past the clear half-back line and there's no ball going into the inside forwards at all at this stage. Comes back to Des and that is a great score. It's his second point here in Croke Park. Scored a smashing goal as well against Kilkenny in the Leinster final. Wexford have it once more. Switching it over towards this wing. Well gathered by Jerry O'Grady, who read it well. David Hoy is outside him, waiting for it. The long delivery is aimed at Dermot McMahon. Turns, and that would be a beautiful point. Jeremy McMahon. Again, he came from the clearance of the field. Um, a two-man forward line for for Wexford. There's somebody in free inside, and it was too easy. The clearance was nobody there to harass or block them down. Tony Griffin. Wexford on a little bit of pressure. Griffin once more. On across to help out his key crosser. Stays within the borough. 
boundaries of the pitch, gives it back to Rory McCarthy, that's good play. A little bit more confident play by Wexford as well. Shawnee McMahon goes back to gather, under a little bit of pressure from Owen Quigley. Gets it back down, breaking ball, goes all the way, far as Brian O'Connell, and that is a turn, and that is over the bar. Certainly, this uh, Clare attack just seems to be first to the ball, and Wexford, as you mentioned, Tomas, very slow in getting rid of it. Yeah, but I mean, Marty, uh, we said there is a strong breeze there, right? I mean, and uh, the breaking ball, is, as it comes to Barry, it's, uh, Brian, sorry, it's a good turn, and off the left hand, no messing, straight over the bar. Had it by Shawnee McMahon. Loses the short grip to try and send this up towards Niall Gilligan. Coming in on the blind side was Barry Nugent. Plenty of extra defenders. Damien Fitzhenry sees the loose ball. It's loose again, and it's pulled and over the bar. Jeremy McMahon gets his second point. But there is a hesitancy and uneasiness in the Wexford inner line, which I didn't see against Kilkenny, but it's there this afternoon. Conor Lynch survives a couple of hefty challenges. Lashes the slither down towards Damien Fitzhenry and sends it over the bar. Des Mighton, Brian Lohan, but he gets by Mo Lohan, Des Mighton. Lohan tries to hook him off the post and manages to squeeze it over the bar for his third point for the wing forward from out of the bat. Good puck out by Davy Fitz. Barry Nugent flicking it on for his Alan Markham, facing Damien Fitzhenry. Oh! I thought he saved it, but the ball is in the net. Alan Markham beats Damien Fitzhenry. After 29 minutes of play, the banner roar around Croke Park. Barry Nugent set up Alan Markham. Air Ogan can merely combining. Fitzhenry will be disappointed. Yeah. He normally saves those kind of shots, but Markham will be thrilled with the finish. Yeah, Scored well, twice against Waterford and once against Wexford. I mean, uh, it's, it's a good goal for Clare. I mean, it's but like... Damon will be disappointed with that. I mean, it's a shot maybe that he feels he should have stopped. And here's Shawnee McMahon. And it's straight over the bar. Clare are on a roll. Redmond Barrett staying in along the sideline. Two Clare lads chasing after him. Tony Carmody is one. Jerry Grady is another. Comes back for his dear Madeleine. Tries to transfer it over. Colin Lynch intervenes and sends it straight down without touching the ball into his hand. Darrell Rye, unusually for him, drops the ball. Now Gilligan. Still Darrell Rye. Tries to come away with it. Rory McCarthy helping out his defence. Comes all the way out for his Alan Markham. And again, that uneasiness is there in the Wexford handling. Nicely cutting inside is Tony Griffin with the short grip. Tries to put this one over the bar and succeeds. It's his third point. Des Mighton might be doing it for Wexford. Tony Griffin is doing it for Clare because they've both scored three points from play. Pulled along the ground for as Alan Markham. Didn't come up the first time or the second time, but managed to get it out for as Damon McMahon. The first cousins combine and the first cousins get a point for Clare. It's his third point of the match, Damon McMahon. Adrian Finland uses the shoulder fairly to get this in. Comes in, and there's a dangerous opportunity here at the end of it. Is Mitch Jordan. Davy fits off his line. Great defending by Jerry Quinn. Jordan back outside for his Redmond Barry. Takes his point, sends it over the bar. And really, Wexford need a goal here. Yeah, great defending again, though, by Jerry Quinn. I mean, he stands up, holds his ground, and I mean, he gets the initial block in, and it's a hand pass hold at the end, and maybe point. He'll be happy to concede a point. As Wexford go back into the attack, not a bad ball. Mitch Jordan inside of his own quickly. He's facing Davy Fitz. Quickly, Fitzy stays on his line. Lohan gathers it. The old firm in the banner. But you have to say, with all credit to Davy Fitz, Owen Quigley should have buried it. Yeah, the ball was all over this, Marty. It was a great bit of play by Wexford and great pass inside. And when Owen Quigley gets this, you would say, this has to go into the back of the net and popped it off the ground and it was an easy save at the end for Davey. Allowed the ball to spill away and here, look, Brian Owen is there and to clear the lines and gets the free out. But again, it was a poor, poor shot by Owen Quigley. Well, 
Declan O'Rourke, tussling. Three Wexford defenders there. One of them is David Doc O'Connor. The hand pass was really to nobody in particular. He's still battling, though, you have to give him credit. And Claire have it. Niall Gilligan looking around at the post. It's in front of Hill 16, and he splits the crossbar. Good score by Niall Gilligan, and his fourth from play. But again, you'd have to say that Wexford, Wexford defence should have cleared that ball. Yeah, no doubt about it. Seemed to be a trip from the Wexford man. He's in the anxiety to get to the ball, so that's going to be a free for Wexford. Yeah, well, very noticeable, Marty. Every time the ball comes out clear, they're not alone. Any chance to settle on the ball, they're up on top of their backs, they're knocking them out the feed, knocking the ball away here, conceding, OK, needless free, but, I mean, they'll be happy enough. With, I mean, it's a way out from goal. They've went through the opportunity to get a point, and they're not conceding goals in their own despair. Rory Jacob. Comes back off the pulse. Jerry Quinn is there. And Clare, defensively, again, quite strong. 99 All Ireland College's star Quinn gives this one away. Des Biden. Wexford have a chance here. They're hungry for goal. Three clear defenders converge, but it's still over the bar. Scored by Michael Jacob, captain of Wexford, getting his second point. Clare go back into the Wexford half of the field. Rory McCarthy. Trying to flick it, but it's not a good idea. Andrew Quinn latching onto it. And it really is challenge game proportions here, which is no good for Wexford and no good for Clare. This ball dropped in and sent over the bar by Tony Carmody. And scored three points, all from play from centre-half forward. You can be too critical of Wexford now, but, I mean, you look, just put it down, it's a bad day at the office, I mean... Some of the play there to, to, to give that point to clear was, was atrocious, really. I mean, at the stage of the game. Can they get the goal? Put a bit of respectability on the scoreboard. <laughs> Jerry Quinn, fair shoulder on Willie Dorn. Comes back outside again. Plenty of clear defenders there. One of them is Jerry Quinn. Flicks it for Brian O'Connell. And there's a third clear man. Oh, a nice little bit of stick work. But Des Martin got it nicely up. Only for is Jerry O'Grady. A little bit of trouble here from Brian Lohan. Wasn't quite expecting that sort of a pass. Jerry Quinn is up and well again and concedes a 65, but the umpire agrees it is a 65. This one dropping in. Nobody can reach it. All gone wide. The referee... Blows the full-time whistle. Here in Croke Park in this quarter-final, the first of the Guinness All-Ireland quarter-finals. It's Clare, one goal and 20 points. That's 23 points. Wexford, 12 points. The look of the draw threw Cork and Waterford together again at the quarter-final stage. Waterford had regrouped since losing in the Munster semi-final and came to Croke Park filled with optimism they could beat Cork and move closer to their first All-Ireland title since 1959. Match underway. And straight away, stalemate in the centre of the field. Remember Cork playing into the goal on the left. Waterford looking for a much, much brighter start than they had nine weeks ago when they conceded a goal and a point in the opening couple of minutes. There's straight away with a host of changes. We have D Dave Bennett joined by Michael Walsh in the middle of the field. They're half hour line now, read Owen Kelly, Seamus Pendergast and Jack Kennedy. And we have John Milan and Paul Flynn inside in the full forward line. And that'll change again, you can be sure. <laughs> well, else, that's the nature of the game, isn't it? Down towards Niall McCarthy there. He could have a vital role to play at centre forward. Comes out here towards the Waterford captain, Owen Kelly. First opportunity to get the ball away, not successful. Helped here by Ken McGrath. Chasing after him is Jerry O'Connor. Leaves the ball behind. This is Tom Kenny. Moving menacingly through the centre to Niall McCarthy. Trying to set up an opening scoring opportunity for Cork. Going for one himself. Dropping short. 
really testing one for the goalkeeper. You can be certain that Clinton Hennessy will be tested early and often by Cork. Prendergast doing his bit to try and keep that ball in place, succeeded as well. Here comes Owen Kelly once again, driving it away long down into the forward line. Pressure on the Cork full back line. Dermot O'Sullivan trying to get the ball away. Dan Shanahan there, but the referee's whistle has uh, sounded, and it's going to be a free out to Cork. Dermot O'Sullivan then into the breeze towards Brian Corcoran. Man who got injured in the Munster final. Got well away from his man that time and put it over the bar. The opening point after two minutes coming from Brian Corcoran. Fergal Hartley just lost his footing there, slipping. I think the neutrals here, if there are any neutrals, are waiting for Waterford to get going. Here comes Seamus Prendergast. A man who would run his heart out for Waterford. Dangerous ball in, and it's over the bar. That's a bit more like it, but it's taken Waterford over nine minutes to get their first score. Well, straight to Jerry O'Connor. Waterford can win it back, however. That's good. Beautiful. Tony Brown over the bar from the middle of the field. Dave Bennett straight at Michael Welch. Waterford hold possession. Bennett again in the breeze. It's not easy to judge it, but he's judged it to a T. His eye was in that time. Beautifully hit by Dave Bennett. That's two really long range points now in the last couple of scores, and the teams are level at three points apiece. This is towards Milan. In the corner there is Brian Murphy. Had his problems against Owen Kelly of Tipperary, but then who wouldn't? Oof, he's in trouble here with a hand pass. Waterford pick it up. Comes back here towards Milan. Pass from Paul Flynn and the referee has blown his whistle and it's a free into Waterford. Well, a goal or a point here from Flynn. We'll see Waterford in front for the first time in the match. The Guinness quarterfinal saved. Back in again, and it's a goal! Dan Shanahan! Dan. Another one for Dan Shanahan. Just going to say there, his goal scoring record against, against Cork. Paul Finn missed hit it, Dan Shanahan in after like a shot, like any good forward, followed it in, and a great finish. Well, score of six goals in last year's championship, and here's another one here. Into space. Brian Corcoran racing after it, taking Fergal Hartley out of position, but the angle is tied out into the corner. Waterford will be happy enough to bottle him up out there, and Waterford do well, and it's James Murray. Knows Cork well, was a student at UCC. And that's going to be a court ball. Couldn't quite deliver the clearance out because he was well aware that he was going to be hooped. Ben O'Connor. Good connection. Dangerous one in. Goalkeeper does really well this time. Hennessy getting it out. Waterford under pressure still, however. And this is Owen Murphy. Good clearance by Murphy. Well delivered up as far as Seamus Prendergast, taking on Ronan Curran. Really doing well, carrying it expertly. Beautiful point. That's a second great point in this match by Seamus Prendergast. And it all came from the line ball, batted out successfully by the goalkeeper. And it's Jerry O'Connor once again. Injecting pace into the movement to his brother Ben, taking the return. This is better. Classy movement, and that's over the bar off the goalkeeper stick. Jerry O'Connor with his first point coming out of midfield. Beautiful link play with his twin brother Ben. David O'Sullivan has come out the field out to the half back line. He's hooked. John. Milan was hooking that time, injured himself in the process. O'Sullivan trying to get the ball away, needing support and help here. This is Jerry O'Sullivan towards Ben, or Jerry O'Connor rather, towards Ben O'Connor. Back towards Jerry once again. 
Has Sean got help being available? Lots of short passing. What are they going to do next? Another hand pass towards John Gardner. 65 metres out from his own goal. Low going long in towards Joe Dean, in towards full forward this time. Breaks towards Kieran Murphy, trying to make his way through. Looking for a penalty. Looking for something. Referee has blown his whistle. Now, what's the decision and where did he fall? If it's a free, it has to be a penalty, Gerard. Well, he didn't wave his hands out. That's what I was waiting for. This is where he moved inside. He was definitely inside the square. It was definitely a penalty. That's puzzling. The referee has given an ordinary 20-metre free. That should have been a penalty. Instead of three on the line, there are five facing Joe Dean. Three points so far. He narrows the gap even more. In midfield, Ben O'Connor tried to pick it up, put his hands, couldn't quite get it. It's Michael Welch who's in there and playing almost a game of hockey with that one. As Waterford trying to keep it in play, much crisper strike by Shonago Halpin down towards Ben O'Connor. Ahead for Tom Kenny. Remember the goal he got against Wexford in the semi final last year? He'd be content with a point here, and he is. <laughs> Michael Walsh coming, rising up for that one. Comes to James Murray, comes back off the legs of Ben O'Connor, trying to apply some pressure on the Waterford backs. Murray on his knees that time. Comes out again to Michael Walsh, who's. Uh, did a lot of hard work in the opening minutes of the second half, but Ben O'Connor here taking it from that group of players. Nice shot, good delivery, and it's over the bar. Ben O'Connor's second point, and the teams are level. Level for the second time. Great start for Cork here. Coming out, looking for the vital scores. Ben doing what he does so well, just waits calmly, coolly, and then swiftly delivers it over the bar. Nearly nine minutes into the second half. Here's Seamus Prendergast, had a very good first half. This is a real speculative one from some considerable distance out. And the umpire says it's over the bar. Milan coming out there, 45 metres out, taking his marker, Brian Murphy, out with him. Needing a score, he's got it! First score of the day for John Milan. Failed to score with the sides, met last in the championship, but he's been anxious to get on the scoreline, racing away here, taking it on his right-hand side. Pat Mulcahy trying to pick this one up, doing so successfully. Bottled up over there by Paul O'Brien. Coming through is Tom Kenny, making a lot of headway. It's Kenny going right through. Good challenge. Excellent challenge coming in that time. Comes out to Ken McGrath. The challenge was by Fergal Hartley. Brilliant intervention to stop a near certain cork score. Michael Walsh, way down the field for Waterford. Dermot O'Sullivan is under it, nurses it to himself. Dodges away from challenges, has O'Halpin available. Here comes the captain, pursued over there by Paul Flynn. Sean O'Halpin going for a score. That's over! That's his first ever point in the championship in his 30th match and he has levelled up the game, a captain's moment, the teams are level for the fifth time. Here's Dan Shanahan, loving it in, straight into the goalkeeper's hands, Donald O'Cusack, away from Paul Flynn, back out the field, battled down there by James Murray, it's quite a contest. And the referee this time indicting Waterford's Owen Kelly. John Gardner. Well, oh, that's a huge one. That's all the way. Cork lead. Gardner's got a third. Three brilliant pointed frees. And it's 15 points to 111. One point the margin. But Waterford are giving as good as they have been getting. Here comes Paul O'Brien. They look for an equaliser. Again, it drops short. 
that Breeze may be a factor in some of those shots not quite reaching the target. Good block down by Milan. Comes to Dan Shanahan. Trying to free up a colleague. It's Seamus Prendergast coming through. Brilliantly done by Prendergast. He's got a third. And it's a thriller at Croke Park. But wide so far. Well, Cork marginally the more guilty. Jerry O'Connor in towards Joe Dean. It hops dangerously down to Brian Corcoran. Dangerous moment for Waterford. Buried! In the 28th minute of the second half. Brian Corcoran, ever the hero. He got one in Perlis against Waterford. He's got another here. It's his fifth ever goal in the championship. It was a walloper past Clinton Hennessy. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant trap puck there. If you just watch, he, he knew he was going to be blocked, so he let the ball hit the ground and then pulled on it. An unstoppable shot from the corner of the net. And Ger they're a first time ball from Jerry O'Connor that time. A high ball in, get it in there quick, and they'll cause damage. They're a very dangerous full forward line. It was the brilliant ground stroke by Corker. It was the technique, it was the opportunism. John Gardner with the free, Cork leading by three. Waterford now with a lot to do, but they're still in there with a really good opportunity. Need to get the ball downfield, Tom Feeney. Not a good ball, mopped up by Tom Kenny in the centre of the field. Trying to open it up here, it's again. That's Neil Ronan playing the ball in. Fergal Hartley a little uncertain initially. Now he's battling there against Brian Corcoran. Again, it is the substitute, Neil Ronan, in on the late baseline there. The shoulder has uh, injured the defender. Ronan cracks it over the bar. He's delighted. His first since coming on. And it's 116 to 112. This was it again here as Waterford had Fergal Hartley, I think, down on the deck from a very awkward angle, a look of delight on the substitute's face. Ronan Curran has managed to get uh, possession. Still in some difficulty, Waterford's line ball. Only four points between them, but only four minutes left. Waterford now, who have withdrawn Paul Flynn. And the other Paul, Paul Foley, is in there at full forward. Yet to get his opportunity. Dave Bennett to take this line ball. Easily stopped by Ronan Curran. Pressurised by Michael Welch. Three court men around him. Nobody able to beat him so far. Difficult ball to take. It's done well there, however. Dan Shanahan inside towards the new full forward. Cork coping with the difficulties. Pat Mulcahy getting the ball here. Taking it away out of danger. Huge clearance way down the field towards Neil Ronan. Stopped over there by Tom Feeney. James Murray walloping it downfield towards the man in the corner, John Milan. Again, it's Ben O'Connor. Very clever play. Tom Kenny, centre of the field. Looks for another. It's a beauty. In fact, it's Kieran Murphy. It's Kieran Murphy who drifted out there. Some of the fans making their way off. 117 to 112. That's Kieran Murphy now, who's gone out into the centre of the field. John Gardner now. Once again, it's another Kieran Murphy, the Aaron's own version. Good take there by Clinton Hennessy. Well, the margin is five points, the widest, widest it's been during this game. Which doesn't really reflect the nature of the game so far and the contribution Waterford have made. Tony Brown trying to drop hit that one out and he's taken, taken it out over his own end line and it's a 65 to Cork. It's the first of the match. And he was really in some difficulty here coming back over his own end line. Ben O'Connor just looking for a nice piece of grass here in Croke Park to take this 65. And it is converted expertly. And the referee blows the final whistle, and Cork advance to the semi-finals. It was a good match, but the all-important score came after 63 minutes of the second half, or 63 minutes of the match.
Brian Corcoran getting in at the loose end of a movement involving uh, Joe Dean and cracking a great ground shot past Clinton Hennessy. And at the end, it's Waterford who lose by five. Full time score Cork 118, Waterford 113. As Cork rolled relentlessly on, the team expected to meet them in the final, Kilkenny prepared to play Limerick. Their new manager, Joe McKenna, had won an All-Ireland with Limerick in 1973 and was now trying to build a team that would see Limerick relive those glory days. Most of his players had won All-Ireland under-21 medals. The question remained, were they good enough to win at senior level? Possession one back in the centre of the field. Derek Ling firing it a long, long distance and over the bar. Great point. Richie Mullally swinging at it for Kilkenny. Huge one downfield. DJ adding to it one handed towards Richie Parr. Comes back to DJ again, had an option outside. Cuts inside beautifully to Martin Comerford. Takes the shoulder with ease. Strikes it perfectly and that's over the bar. Good point. Here's Andrew O'Shaughnessy trying to set something up here with James O'Brien in action. The centre half forward coming through, selling dummies and firing a shot in and putting it over the bar. That's not half bad. And the stats so far, Wides, Kilkenny, marginally more guilty. Tommy Welch has uh, attempted ball into the forwards, wasn't terribly far, but here comes Henry. Here's the wizardry. Great point. First from play for the day. JJ Delaney coming across first time to Rich to uh, Henry Shefflin. The marking getting a little slack. Limerick lapsing in concentration. And that's punished emphatically. Took a long time to come down for Henry Shefflin. But it's a six point. Ollie Moran under pressure from Tommy Welch. And it's Henry Shefflin who comes onto it here, sweeps it out towards Martin Comerford. And Martin Comerford from a, a long distance out has got a second point. Promising move here involving Paul O'Grady. Yeah. Put it over the bar, I'm sure the fans are saying. Inside towards Andrew Shocknessy to take on Michael Kavanagh. Still with possession, shorting the grip on the stick, and he's put it over. Good point by Andrew Shocknessy. And it's 11 points to five, six between them. Richie Mullally under this one, but lets it run on. It runs on as far as Paul O'Grady. Limerick hoping to make a positive start to the second top. This is a good run now. Can he finish with a score? Has Donny right outside. He held it well. Cutting beautifully. Goal here. Too many steps. Too many steps. He did foul it. Well, definitely, no doubt. He definitely took too many steps, but he was very unlucky at the same time. How many times do we see players in that position not been pulled? This is Henry Shefflin, still out on the 40. Inside to DJ Carey, has had limited opportunities. Limerick surrounding him. Back there is Niall Moran. He's left it to the Dodger, however. DJ selling a dummy initially. Second attack, and that's over the bar. That's a brilliant point by DJ Carey. His first of the afternoon. It was, Jeremy. Watch here again. Look, he trucked him yep. on the hit it there. Had the presence of mind that he was going to be hooked. Holding on to it here is Richie Mullally, sweeping it away downfield. Only one man there for Limerick, however, and that's Mark Foley, returned with interest towards Donny Ryan's corner. Having a battle over there with JJ Delaney, who kicks it forward into space. Gathered up here by Niall Moran. Going for another one for Limerick. Beautifully on target. A first for Niall Moran. Spooning it away down towards O'Shaughnessy, being marked by Kavanagh, posing a few problems for all of the Kilkenny backs. Out it comes once again towards O'Grady. Nice pick up this time. That's beautifully on its way and it's over. And there are only three points between the teams. Down towards TJ Ryan, looking for a break. Comes to TJ, trying to thunder his way through. Awkward angle and he's put it over the bar. He's playing with fire in the belly now. This is Henry Shefflin. Now, can he start giving the direction again to Kilkenny that they need so badly? DJ's come out the field. 
That's a big looking shot, and that lands perfectly over Timmy Houlihan's crossbar. And DJ Carey has got a second point in this game. Once again, Kilkenny winning the vital duels here. Brian Barry sending that one up there to Mark Foley for Limerick. Goes short to Peter Lawler. Lawler is going to have a crack at this one from some distance. What a point by Peter Lawler. That's two for Lawler this afternoon. Ollie Moran soloing forward. Catching uh, Kilkenny off balance somewhat. Good block there by McGarry. Goes after it himself. Give it away from Andrew O'Shaughnessy. Oof. Taking a long while to get that ball away. Needing support and in the end it's kicked out over the end line. And uh, it's Peter Barry who concedes what is the game's first 65. Peter Lawler once again. From the 65, can he land it? He can. He's got a third. Three points the difference once again in a game which has yet to produce a first goal. Is there to be one? It's 16-13. Eddie Brennan tries to make headway from the right half-forward position. Still Jenkins, looking for a score, lobbed in, dangerously in there. And it's Henry Shefflin dragged down, he looks for a penalty and he's got one. Penalty to Kilkenny. In the 61st minute, well, Limerick left Damien Rail exposed in there against Henry Shefflin. Down went the corner forward. And the referee had no doubts. DJ Carey looking for a crucial goal here for Kilkenny to sway the tie. No, it it's, not allowed. Again. it's not allowed. There was an encroachment. Not allowed. It has to be taken again. There was an encroachment. The boys are, now this is interesting because DJ still buried the penalty, you know. So why would you why would you take it again? There were, there were Limerick lads that, the Limerick backs got inside the 21 before the penalty was taken. DJ deep in take a breath. Looking for goal number 35 in his career in the championship. He's happy with a point. That's a third for DJ Carey, all of them coming in the second half. Pat Tobin blocked down. It comes to Martin Comerford. Comerford going forward. Five minutes to go. Hurley's flying. And Martin Comerford has put the ball wide, but there was a Hurley flying. It should be a free. It should be a free into Kilkenny for a thrown Hurley. Referee is back there having a word with Niall Moran. Might be more than a word. And another flash of the card. Yeah, but he didn't give a free in. Jim. Yeah, he should have given a free should've in. Should have given a free in. Just a little lapse of concentration, I think. As, uh, there's no question about that. Moran knocking it away down. Oh, Donny Ryan was hoping to get a favourable bounce. O'Shaughnessy held up by Michael Kavanagh expertly. Just blunting the edge of the Limerick attack. Comes back here towards James O'Brien. Got one of those Limerick scores in the first half. That's a great block down by Tommy Welch. Great play in here. Beautifully taken down here by Owen McCormack. And he's won a free off Peter Lawler. Free into Kilkenny. And all of these frees now are so crucial for the Cats. They can establish a complete down mastery. Absolutely a brilliant block down by Tommy Walsh. Just showing the other side of his game. He's a great man to chase back and cover. Big free now for Shefflin. To put five between them. And that will do very nicely indeed for Kilkenny. The quarter-final options have been interesting this year. This is the end of the fourth and final one. And it's Kilkenny who have beaten Limerick. Kilkenny came into the match with worries about injuries, but they finished as victors. Kilkenny 18 points, Limerick 13. Galway's team was packed full of players with All-Ireland underage medals. But for their quarter-final meeting with Tipperary, they were without two of their best players, Kevin Broderick and Eugene Clunan. Their absence and Tipperary's impressive second-half performance against Cork in the Munster final meant that the Munster men entered the game as favourites. Just barely kept in play. Pulled on by Richie Murray. Sent along the surface and I can tell you the Croke Park pitch is in beautiful condition this afternoon. 
walked it before the game started over to the Cusick stand where these teams were dressing and that is a very good score to set Galway on their way. Brendan Cummins continues to vary his puck outs left and right. This time it arrived off a of Galway stick. Sideline ball here for Eddie Enright. All-star midfielder four years ago from the famous Thurless Sarsfields Club. Sends it across to his midfield partner, Paul Kelly. Front of the post. Hits it well. Straight over the bar. Philip Maher up here. Loses his hurling. Tries to flick it out. Jeff Farher working hard. Nice top back. Didn't quite work out for him, however. Comes to Paul Kelly. Sends this ball in towards Michal Webster. Causing problems for Shane Kavner. Flicks it out. Referee has blown his whistle for a jersey pull on Michal Webster. Paul Kelly. Driving it in. Stopped on the line. Derek Hardiman comes away with it. But perhaps on reflection and in that wonderful gift of hindsight, he'd have been better off to tap it over the bar. It's early days here in Croke Park. Philip Marr knocking it down for his aim and Corcoran. Under a little bit of pressure. Two Galway players converging him. And again, it's Paul Curran that sends it out for his Dermot Fitzgerald. And he's playing in his eighth championship match today. Gives the ball away. Comes for his Fergal Healy, lofting it high. And straight over the bar for his first point in this All-Ireland uh, quarter-final. Here's Ger Farraher. Hits it well. Looks a beauty. Over the bar. Big worry, of course, for the tridesmen here this afternoon is the lack of physical strength and that a point that Donald Grady was making about sending in the ball quick to the forwards is a crucial factor. Here comes Tipperary down at the other end. Shane Cameron... Oh! A crocket of a shot from Tommy Dunn. He can afford to smile, can't he? It's the long ball strategy into Michal Webster. It's causing problems. It broke off Webster and Shane Kavanagh. Tommy Dunn made room for himself here. And God, no man couldn't stop it. Fabulous goal. Oh, well, great goal by Tommy Dunn. But uh, if you look at it again, if we get a chance to look at it again, Damien Joyce was... Um, should have been right behind Tommy Dunn that time to stop him coming onto the ball, but M Michael Webster is, is creating problems inside for Shane Dunn on the high ball, definitely. Dermot Fitzgerald sends it back into Webster, Kavner losing ground. Back outside again, another point on its way. Created by Webster. Finished by Owen Kelly. Tom Paris, Paul Curran from Milliner Hall. It is uh, championship debut against Offaly three years ago. Michal Webster, fabulous catch in a limb. Dunham who brought to ground has to be a penalty, and it is. And Galway are in deep trouble at fullback. Here is Owen Kelly. Blasted in past Liam Dunham. Seemed to go off the hurley of Liam Dunham. Let's just see it here. And between himself and Derek Hardiman, just managed to sneak it through. Paul Kelly has to go back together. Flicks it over for his uh, younger brother, Owen. And he nicely sets up Benny Dunn here. Two goal pairs with him. Has to be temporary player available. And there is. Back to Paul Kelly, who initiated the move. And that's his third point. Here's his partner, Eddie Enright. Here's Eamon Corcoran. Survives the hefty shoulder from David Collins. Richie Murray seems to be all over him, but Corcoran holds the slither, puts it into the space. And they haul Webster to run onto. Options available. Crossfield ball is possibly one of them. Fortunately, Benny Dunn has to go back to gather. Lobs this in and goes straight over the bar. Derek Hardiman will have to play a lot tighter on Benny Dunn. That's his second point. Still injury time being played here. Perhaps enough for Galway to get another score before halftime. Shane Kavner. Goals for power, and it's matched by accuracy. That's a fine point by the fullback converted to centre-back. Alan Curran flicking it forward for his Niall Healy. Gathers it the second time. Nice stick work by Healy, who stuck to his task. Three temporary defenders around him. Breaking ball favours Damian Hayes. 
good opportunity here for David Ford. He's willing to take on the Tipperary cover. Hits a shot! A fantastic goal! Well, he has his critics down in Galway, but I have to say I've always been an admirer because he puts his head down. He's a, such a hard worker for a centre-forward. He was willing to take on the Tipperary cover here, got inside Conor O'Mahony and beat Brendan Cummins. Cohen that pulls in the first time. Fires Eddie Enright, who lobs this one in towards Redser. O'Grady sidesteps one man. That is Shane Kavanagh. Turns onto his left and sends it over the bar. And a great interception by Colin Cohen came across, and then he hit a dreadful clear himself. And then there was very poor support here, so the guy were not supporting their players fast enough when they're in trouble. Quick uh, puck out seemed a good idea until Shane Kavanagh's effort was blocked, and Tipperary have punished Shane Kavanagh. But another fine point by Owen Kelly. Picked up here by David Ford, uses a short grip, gone past the 45, flicking it inside. This is a good move by Galway, has a shot oh, off the crossbar. And Galway denied. That's a fantastic save by Brendan Cummins. Galway gather possession, have to work very hard. Damien Haynes, he has plenty of acres of court park in front of him. Can he finish? Oh, he went for the corner and he wasn't very far away. Forward, Colin Cohen has a fresh air. Fergal Healy knocks it down for his David Tierney. About to be challenged by Reds or O'Grady. Tierney dropping this one in. Brendan O'Grady watches it as it goes over the crossbar. That's a very good point by David Tierney. It's his second of the afternoon. And here he is again. Kilna Dima Leitrim, club man. Tierney just unfortunately took his eye off the ball there. High challenge, not allowed, right in front of the referee. 3-2 Tipperary for that foul on Paul Kelly. It's the 45 and the 65, uh, as you can see from your television screens, and he's giving it everything. He's going for it. The white flag is raised. His ninth point will be remembered in uh, Croke Park. A goal and nine points now. Derek Hardiman. Jeff Farrer comes out from corner forward. Whips it in towards Damian Hayes. Hayes facing Brendan Cummins. Can he get inside Hugh Maloney? Still Hayes. His pat blocked. First time. Oh! A marvellous goal! What a superb, absolutely fantastic goal that brings the goal man and Connor Hayes back into contention. It looked as if Hugh Maloney had him stopped. He literally forced the cornerback out of the way, and Brendan Cummins hardly saw it. The momentum and the rhythm is undoubtedly with Galway. Here's Richie Murray from the St. Thomas's Club in County Galway, going, going for the equaliser. The sides are level in Croke Park with just eight minutes left. Well, often it happens, Marty, when you, you're in close control and you drop your guard a little bit, and Galway will come back into the game and. Uh, they're really putting up the tick now, they have the momentum with them, and um, if they can tack on another point or two, they'll be in the driving seat. Ger Farrer tried to put Galway in front, off the stick of Brendan Cummins, who did his best to stop it from going over the bar, and Ger Farrer has put Galway in front. Nicely picked up as Tipperary now. Seek an equaliser. This one is going high from Dermot Fitzgerald and it's gone over the bar. Tuck out by Liam Dunahoo. Aimed at the far side. Breaking ball favours David Ford. Sends it back. Overfires Richie Murray. Front of the Cusick stand. Lobbing it high. And lobbing it over the bar. Oh, fabulous point. It's his third. In towards Big John Carroll. That does it perfectly. Gets up, lays it off, or tries to lay it off as Reds are upgrading. Did well to gather, looks at the pulse, sends it high, and it's curling, and it's gone to the right and wide. Reds are O'Grady is furious, and he's gone out to aid on Max Swift and says it was clearly centimetres, inches, feet perhaps, inside the right hand pulse. Let's just see this again. Ball curling in. Well, certainly from there, from that camera angle, you'd have to say that uh, Gerard Grady might have an argument. Well, I think Matthew and Kelly's gone very quiet in the last few minutes because Ali Canning is marking him. 
tightly. Well, Damien Joyce was heroic there with his clearance. The slither glued to the hurling. It was foul, so it's a free here for Ter Farher. This is well outside the 65. Looks good. Oh, fantastic score by Ter Farher. That was a great score, Marty, for, you know, for team under pressure. Can they connect with this? But it's David Ford, centre-half forward. Look at the determination on his face. Slither glued to the hurley. The final whistle blows. And Tipperary are out of the championship. Galway are through to the All-Ireland semi-final. What a result. The Premier are out of the championship. In the 1990s, Clare shook the hurling world by coming from nowhere to win two All-Irelands. The last remnants of that team were still driving Clare in search of another. Those players had made their name by beating teams with huge reputations. The prospect of playing Cork in an All-Ireland semi-final was sure to inspire them to one more huge effort. Match is underway and it's Clare who have whatever light breeze there is supporting them for the opening 35 minutes. And straight away here they are defending with Jerry O'Grady trying to get the ball away out into the centre. Colin Lynch sweeping it way down, Donal O'Cusack coming from his goal. Secure, doing a quick turn around, linking up with the two-thirds of the full back line. That's Brian Murphy, hot to handle. And there was an early pull there, a jersey pull indeed by David Hoey on his man, his man being Timmy McCarthy. So Dickie Murphy, who uh, has, of course, refereed four All-Ireland Senior Finals, wasn't involved for the last two years because he was a selector with the Wexford Senior Hurlers. Good to see him back, that familiar smile. This is John Gardner. 70 metres out, gone to the right. First opportunity, gone a-begging. John playing in his 17th championship match. David Fitz thinking about a quick puck out. The puck outs are going to be very interesting this afternoon. Keep a really good eye on them. We know all about Cork's uh, penchant for taking short or deliberate puck outs and then building in measured fashion. Well, Claire have been studying this very carefully all through the summer. Let's see what they can do. Straight down the middle towards their centre forward, Tony Carmody. But it's won there instead by Jerry O'Connor, who went deep. O'Connor challenging Colin Lynch, beaten. Lynch has it, 70 metres out. Going for the opening score, again it's tailing to the right, a wider piece. Down towards Brian Crocker, beaten for it there, who runs away from him, Jerry Quinn. One of the best defensive covering players that Clare have got this year. They were trying to make some headway over there. And that is Brian O'Connell who's down there. Not the best for wear. John Gardner was spoken to by the referee. Yeah, you know what you hear again. Look, it, it is body charge straight into the, the mid referee, and uh, there's no doubt about it. It is a free in for clear. So Niall Gilligan coming out to take this free, looking for the opening point of the match. Gilligan playing in his 39th championship game, 29 points so far in five games this summer for a Clare team who must be confident on the back of two good wins over Waterford and Wexford. It's a dangerous ball in. Falls back down here, Dermot McMahon. 20 metres out, half blocked. Still around there, dangerous. And Tony Carmody hits it and puts it over the bar. The opening point comes after nearly four minutes of play. A lot of dominance from Clare. They've won a lot of good early ball, and finally they managed to get something out of the possession. Tony Carmody here at the end of this movement, left alone, just uh, given enough latitude, good score. The puck out is a long one. Brian Lowen there contesting with Brian Corcoran. Niall McCarthy dodging this way and that. Taking over is Jerry O'Connor, 45 metres out from goal. That's over the bar. Good score by Jerry. 
Cork will be hoping to dominate the midfield exchanges with their duo in there for the last couple of years, Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor, known in Cork as the Tom and Jerry Show. Yeah, it was a great score, but very interesting there, the long ball, that was a, uh, the ball was going out to Brian Cochran, I mean, to come out maybe out to the 40 for the puck outs and the breaking ball, and was won by Niall McCarthy and a set up onto Jerry, Jerry O'Connor for a good score. Davy Fitzgerald varying the puck out this time, out towards Markham, runs beyond him, all the way in towards Niall Gilligan, looking for a really big match this afternoon, taking on Pat Mulcahy. Back there as well to try and help out is uh, Ben O'Connor. Runs loose to Tony Griffin, the much-travelled Tony having a shot and putting it over the bar. Great point by Tony Griffin, man who has spent so much of the winter studying in Canada. And he's put Clare back in front here again. Tom Kenny getting back onto it again. The little hand pass inside to Timmy McCarthy. Beating the attempted block there of Sean McMahon. The huge one. It's a good one. It's over the bar. Timmy McCarthy from Castle Lions tying it up at two points apiece. This was a very good score. Yeah. Made for him there by Tom Kenny onto Timmy McCarthy. And he had the confidence and the courage to go for it. Into the centre. Ronan Curran again makes a very good catch here. Started well against Waterford and then got into difficulty. Curran available once again. Taking it up onto the stick, beating Tony Carmody to it. Jerry O'Connor is available to help out. Here comes Shalago Halpine. He's 45 metres out. Oh, Halpine has scored the last day. Looking for another one. And Oh, Halpine has got two points in two games. Not half bad for a number seven. Here's Tony Griffin, outside to Alan Markham, Cork leading for the first time, that's blocked well by Donald O'Kiozak, outside to O'Sullivan. Yeah, and you look at Markham here, I mean, I think he should put the ball over the bar, being honest with you, when he got that chance. Here comes Andrew Quinn on his left-hand side, going for a score, again he's missed it. And the Clare shooting is not good. Only 15 minutes gone, and they have five wides. Yeah, they're like getting plenty of possession. I'm sure Anthony Dale will be furious down there. Inside there towards Tony Griffin. Breaks down here well. Gilligan once again, pressurised by Jerry O'Connor. Seemed to go off O'Connor, it did. It's the first 65 of the afternoon. Now, where's that going to end? It's over the bar. It's a big lift for Clare. Here's Kenny. Through the middle once again, Tom Kenny. It opens up for him, and it's saved brilliantly by Davy Fitzgerald. A wonderful piece of goalkeeping. It should have been buried. There was a support player there, Joe Dean, but Tom Kenny went through. The connection wasn't the greatest, but credit the goalkeeper. Good save. Down towards Brian Corker, ready to try and take on his man. Who's the other Brian, Brian Lowen. And Lion, Brian Lowen gets in his stick, makes the clearance, it's effective, and it keeps Brian Corker in at bay. Sideline cut here by Ben O'Connor. Uh, that's over. He's a wonderful exponent of that art, and it's a second point for Ben O'Connor. There's Dermot McMahon. His striking of the ball has got much, much better this summer. Link play is good. Markham, over. It's Andrew Quinn indeed. Timmy McCarthy's jersey was pulled initially, but it goes back there as far as Tony Carmody. From a huge distance out, it's over the bar. Great point by Carmody. Well, Cork still trying to come forward with Kieran Murphy here, trying to lower the gap. He's succeeded. His first point of the match. It's now getting no hazard. Hook brilliantly there. Wonderful hook. Still persistence by uh, Gilligan. Kieran Murphy got the hook in. 
This is Griffin. Dangerous situation for Claire. Shortens the grip from the stick and puts it over the bar. It's the opening point of the second half. It's taken five and a half minutes to produce. The old warrior. A little hand pass inside to O'Connell. They have a good duo in midfield. Working for Claire. It's a huge one from distance. And it's over the bar. And it's Brian O'Connell who gets his first point. Out there towards Tony Griffin, trying to steal a march on John Gardner. Stepping in now, McCarthy whipping on it. And in the end, it's gone all over the sideline. It's a line ball to Clare. 12 7. Good connection. Nice ball into Tony Carmody. Getting away from Ronan Curran. Hitting it high and hitting it accurately. Yeah, they're inspired. They're absolutely inspired. Cork haven't scored for 15 minutes of this game. Do you remember when Cork were All-Ireland champions in 1999 and what happened the following year in the semi-final against Offaly? That's right. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you win an All-Ireland, it's even harder afterwards to actually retain it. And this game isn't over yet. I mean, I still think you're trying to get back into it, but at the moment, you would say it's looking good for clear. Ben O'Connor, two points from Freeze, but one from a sideline. And that is over the bar, and it's Cork's first point of the second top, and it's taken nearly 14 minutes of this half alone. Out towards Andrew Quinn to Colin Lynch. Well, that would have been a magnificent point. He loves hitting those huge ones from out the field. Brian Corcoran has been taken off the Cork team. Ronan Curran is also leaving the fray. Neil Ronan has come into the forwards, Wayne Sherlock into the backs. Well, that's Brian Corcoran. So many times a star this afternoon didn't quite work out for him. And Ronan Curran taken off for the second match in succession. It's a statement of fact by the Cork selectors. It's a brave, big move. It's a big move. I mean, OK, but Ronan was under pressure at centre-back, but uh, uh, it's a big move for taking Brian Cochran off as well because there was a lot worse than Brian out there as well in the forward line. Joe Dean hasn't scored so far. They need a lift, they might get it, and Dino has done it! Joe Dean from Killa, making it 13 points to nine. towards Ben O'Connor. Instinctively hitting it, knew where the target was, and it lands inside the upright. It's over the bar. John Gardner comes, great catch. 65 metres out from the Clare goal, nonchalantly striking it, sweeping it beautifully over the bar, and there's just two points between the teams. John Gardner's second score. Well, you know, the way the second half has gone so far, Clare got four in a row, now Cork have got four in a row yeah, themselves. That's, I mean, we're talking about leaders, and, I mean, that move put Garner back into centre-back is paying off, and, I mean, that was a great catch by him, a great run of defence, and a great strike off his left hand, and, I mean, if that doesn't lift the Cork team, I don't know what will. Virgil Lynch is being prepared by Clare in the restructuring of the Cork team, by the way, Pat Mulcahy is right half. This is into Joe Dean, ready to take on his man O'Grady under pressure. Joe Dean strikes an acute angle, it's over. Joe Dean's second point in about three minutes. 13-12, a fascinating contest. Next score is crucial. Runs all the way through to Andrew Quinn, is this the next score? It is! Quinn's second point, clear lead by two. Frank Lowen misses, taken down here. Kieran Murphy trying to get the ball through here. Outside it goes towards Neil Ronan. On the angle where he scored in the last match, an impossible situation then. This time it's over the bar. And one between them again. Neil Ronan once more coming to Cork's rescue. 
There's Tony Griffin. Good ball inside. Once again, it is Tony Carmody over his left shoulder. And it's beautifully over the bar. Tony Carmody swings over a fourth point. Neil Ronan came out for that one. He's left it behind to Jerry O'Connor. Has taken off the green helmet to his brother Ben. And that's over the bar. And it should have been in the back of the Clare net. It was as good a goal chance as they're likely to get. But it's 15 points to 14. Yeah, one between went, them. When you see the ball coming through, you would say, was Jerry going to throw over the bar? Hands it across the bin and you would say, God, this is in the back of the net. David Fitzgerald ready to launch this one. Giving it everything he has. Pressure on Sean O'Gohalpine. The court captain keeping it along the ground here. Once again, it is it's Jerry O'Connor this time. One of the twins. Quick look up to see where's the support coming from. It's Niall McCarthy trying to cut inside. Looking for the equaliser. He's got it! Level for the fourth time. And Niall McCarthy answers his critics with his first point of the semi-final match. And it's 15 points for Clare. 15 points for Cork. Niall McCarthy ties it up at Grove Park. Heading into the last minute of the 70. Cork come forward and Cork lead. And it is Jerry O'Connor. 20 seconds to go. It's Jerry O'Grady who's taking it out there towards Colin Lynch. He's missed a lot. Can he get away from Jerry O'Connor? It's Colin Lynch leading the charge of the banner. They're behind by a point. Great defensive work by Cork. Griffin outside to Lynch. There might be one last chance for Colin Lynch here. It's awkward. It's going right and it's gone wide. Towards Brian Lowen and Joe Dean. It's gone forward here to Kieran Murphy. There's a chance to tie it up completely. And a great save by David Fitzgerald from Neil Ronan. They're still playing away there, playing their hearts out. Niall McCarty trying to get the ball up. It doesn't matter anymore because Cork have won. Cork have beaten Clare in as titanic a clash as you could wish to see in Croke Park in the Guinness All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. Full credit to both teams. It's a shame there had to be a loser today because just like yesterday, nobody deserves to go home broken-hearted. And Clare are right now, and Davy Fitzgerald is furious. Clare are downhearted. Full-time score here. It's Cork, 16 points. Clare, 15. Cork had survived an almighty scare in one of the most dramatic and skillful games of the year. But now all eyes were on the second semi-final. Galway had blossomed in the last 15 minutes of their quarter-final against Tipperary and were now full of confidence for a semi-final with Kilkenny. In 2004, Kilkenny had hammered Galway by 19 points. Now Galway were out for revenge. Shepard gone straight to centre forward with a switch with Owen Larkin. That's the only change. Tommy Walsh in the middle of the field. And this is just an amazing start because it was an exchange between two players, one from either side. And now the game is on. So obviously that uh, tenacity that Goldberg brought to the All Ireland Hurling semi final in 2001 reflected there at the very beginning. They certainly uh, felt hurt by the 19-point defeat last season. As we look again at the very start, Derek Ling and Fergal Healy got involved here. Here's a chance for David Tierney, licking this one in, and it's over the bar. Good start for Galway. The positioning of Ollie Canning on DJ is a very interesting one. And here's a chance for Eddie Brennan! It should have been cleared. But when you have an opportunist sniffing around the edge of the square, then it's...
it's trouble with a capital T for Galway. This should have been cleared. It slipped inside, skidded on the surface, and Eddie Brennan's finishing was superb. Tommy Walsh picks it up, flicks it down over to the far wing. In towards Eddie Brennan, the goal scorer. Damian Joyce with him, giving a little bit too much space. Brennan turns and sends it over the bar. A goal and a point after four minutes and 21 seconds. Just some uh, statistical information for you. 58% already for Kilkenny. Reflected on the scoreboard, it must be said as well. Kilkenny doing well. And that half back line, JJ Delaney to Michael Kavner. Lofting it high up to Ozone Larkin. Shane Kavner with him, and it's Brennan once more. And it's another point for the corner forward from Greg Pally Callan. And I think a change is now necessary if Galway are going to, uh, in any way, stop Eddie Brennan from having a match of the day performance. John Hoyne dropping this one in. Where's Eddie Brennan? Oh, good block down by Shane Kavner. The first time that Eddie Brennan has actually been beaten in any way since this game started. And that might just give Galway a psychological boost. And well won by Damian Hayes. But credit Shane Kavner because he is the one that started that uh, movement with a fabulous block down on Eddie Brennan. Well, it's three out of three so far for Ger Farher. This is going to go for his fourth point of the afternoon here at Park. And despite that brilliant Kilkenny start, there's now just one point between the teams. Richie Murray leaving it behind him, Derek Ling nipping in. Survives the challenge, Galway players protesting that he took too many steps. Seamus Roach giving the free this time to Kilkenny. John Tennyson. On a minor All Ireland back in 2002 and 2003 as a fullback. Drops this one in. It's a dangerous enough ball. Liam Dunno keeps his eye on it all the way. Flicks it out for Derek Cardiman. That's good defending again by Galway. Down for Ger Farah who knocks it down. Picked up by Richie Murray. Given a little bit of space. Can he punish the error? Lovely play by Richie Murray. He joins David Tierney and Ger Farah the scoreboard and it was Farahard that flicked it into the space and the St. Thomas's man from the Peterswell and Kilcreased area of County Galway finished superbly. <laughs> Fabulous catch. 25 year old from Mullion. Pulled on by David Collins. Richie Murray in the centre. Better play by Galway. Diagonal ball over towards Damian Hayes and company. Chasing the slither Michael Kavner. It's there ahead of the corner forward from Portumna. Richard Milano kicked ahead by David Tierney. Back to Tierney once more, getting inside the Kilkenny cover. Farah is available here. Is there a goal? Yes! Fabulous goal by Galway. Sure, Farah the scorer. Kilkenny rocked after half an hour in Cork Park in an All Ireland semi final that had Kilkenny written all over it from the very beginning. Brennan scoring first goal. Here's the second goal of the match. Unstoppable. Yeah, but I think David Tierney's maturity as a player, maybe. You know, he was here with flashy boots and long hair. That's all gone now. And what a pass inside. Great vision. And it's all, I think, all deserved. You know, they have been well on top uh, since that early first five minutes. And well deserved. And Galway are showing a bit of character here. Pulled on by David Fort. Scored a cracking goal against Tipperary. Here comes Hayes. Kavner has to get there. Damien Hayes beating Michael Kavner. Goal number two. Stopped by McGarry. Farah! It's incredible. Two goals and seven points for corner forward Jeff Farah. A brilliant minor. He has his critics in Galway, but he's a hero for the Tribesman. But a cracking two goals and seven points. Chasing after this is David Collins with Eddie Brennan, and Brennan is wrapped up as Collins sends it back down into the left half forward position. Picked up by David Tierney, started the game with a point, created the goal. Oh, lovely scale. Pat Delaney, style from Kilkenny, did it in the 70s, dropping this in and sending it over the bar. It's a wonderful game, but it's played like this. And the 
debate was, would it be the Galway, the average Galway side, or would it be the brilliant side? Well, let me tell you, Galway have arrived in Croke Park, and they mean business, and it's the brilliant Galway so far. Kilkenny need a score or two before half-time now to get them back into this game. Long ball into Tennyson, hits up now! And Kilkenny get the goal! A long ball! All the way down to Henry Shefflin. Got inside the cover, and look at this for finishing. Fantastic. A cracking All-Ireland hurling semi-final. Tony O'Gregan. Blocks. Comes for Shane Kavner. Gets by Eddie Brennan. For Ali Kevin. And the pass goes astray. There's a chance here for John Hoyne. Goal for Kakeni. Now to have everything here. Incredible. Just watch this. This was a ball that should have been cleared. The pass inside to Ali Cannon went by him and John Hoyne gave Liam Dunham no chance. Liam Dunham aims for the middle channel, picked up by Peter Barry. David Collins battling with Martin Comerford, who's now at the edge of the square. Flicks it outside for his own Larkin, and Larkin sends it over the bar. It's his first point in this All Ireland semi final. And just as much quick as you say, Kilkenny, there's now just one point between the teams. Breaking ball, picked up by Larkin, almost at least. Instead, it's Fergal Healy. 28-year-old, down for as Alan Kearns from Clarence Bridge. Cromwell and Clarence Bridge combining nicely. Lays it off as David Ford. Back to a Clarence Bridge man, and this is looking good. It's his second point in this All-Ireland semi-final. And it's a vital, crucial point. Just when Kilkenny had reduced that uh, lead to just one point. Nice combination here between the two clubmen and county men. Took out by James McGarry, out to the Hogan stand side. Well pulled on by Eddie Brennan. Martin Comerford comes out quickly. David Collins chasing after him. Comerford creates a bit of space for himself and then flicks this over the bar for his first point in this All-Ireland semi-final. Eddie Brennan getting away from Shane Kavner. This is going to curl and it's going over the bar. Great point. A goal and three points. Eddie Brennan has scored exactly the same amount that Henry Shefflin has scored. And this is the reverse angle camera, and it gives you an idea of the distance that Eddie Brennan travelled here. Fergal Healy across to Richie Murray. Alan Kearns got into a corner forward position. This is Kearns. There's a chance here for Murray. Hitting it. Oh, great save. Healy. Goal for Galway. Kilkenny defence exposed by the creativity of a Galway attack that has speed. And may I mention as well, with a capital S, skill. Cairns setting up Richie Murray. Brilliant save here by McGarry. Superb. But Healy was unmarked and he finished it into the back of the Hill 16 net. Back there again is James Ryan, who's picking up a lot of loose ball, tussling with Murray. Centimetres away from the sideline, one handed pull by Ryle. Comes into the centre where it should be Fergal Helix. Crossing it over. It's a poor ball. David Ford did well to gather it. Three Kilkenny players around him. Has to go back. Pulled on first time by Fergal Healy. In towards Nile Healy, the brother. Damien Hayes available. Healy looking around. Has to go back to Jeff Farraher. Farraher onto the right hand side this time. Has the height, has the distance, and has the accuracy. Two goals and eight points by a corner forward from, Ger from Castle Gar called Jeff Farraher. Peter Barry back there struggling. Jeff Farrer kicking it first, David Ford. Farrer wanted it again. Niall Healy gone to the right. But Farrer well, unable to get it because David Ford had taken too many steps. And for mouthing by Peter Barry and for some dissent, it's a throw ball in first. Niall Healy. It's one against one against Roy. Casey McGarry. What a goal. What a fantastic goal. Two goal hero from Crowell. Their captain, the referee, gave the throw ball, came in 
Ryan to Healy, take it out, Galway. And James McGarry beaten incredibly for the fourth time in an All-Ireland hurling semi-final. Alan Kurtz, very courageous, brave, loving it in towards Niall Healy and Joe Farron. John Tennyson has to go back together. Half blocked. Comes back again to Galway hands. Good pair of hands by Richie Murray. Great point. Took a year out, as Michael mentioned earlier. Came back this season. Won a Fitzgibbon Cup with UL as a young teenager and as certainly a player with a very impressive CV at underage level. Here he is in the biggest stage of all, an All-Ireland hurling semi-final and scoring points like that. And you have to say, at this stage, it's all gold. They're dominating in key areas. Kilkenny unable to find their rhythm. Derek Hardiman lashing it out towards the wing. Battling here, Michael Kavner with Damian Hayes. Still Hayes with the support of Alan Kearns. Niall Healy wants it in long. Dropping this one in. James McGarry comes off his line. Niall Healy gets a touch. A hat-trick for Niall Healy. Three goal hero from Crowell and County Galway. The Galway fans cannot believe it. They didn't believe in this team for so long. But this Galway side under Conor Hayes has come of age. It was predicted by all the experts. It had to be a Cork Kilkenny final. Maybe Clare, maybe Waterford, and maybe as an outside chance, maybe Galway. Well, Galway have certainly come of age. This ball inside, gathered by Comerford, does it? Katie Brennan, it's a goal! This game is far from over. Kilkenny respond with two goals and three points by Eddie Brennan. This ball inside, gathered, David Collins was right beside him, but the finish here was top class again. Here's Mark Comerford. Richie Power has gone to his right. This is Power. Eddie Brennan is to his left. Still Richie going for the shot and over the bar. Second point for Richie Power from Carrick Shock. A big goal chance for Marty you know. Good running by Power here. Got inside the cover and had the confidence. Tuck out by Liam Dunahoe. We're hearing word from the sideline that there's going to be three additional minutes. Here's David Ford. David Tierney, Kid Kenny back bravely, courageously. Here's Kevin Broderick. Broderick looking at the goalposts, signalling his arrival in Kirk Park. What a fantastic point by Kevin Broderick. The referee looks at his watch. Cork Kilkenny hurling final not going to take place unless Kilkenny salvage something here. Collins shows that there are footballers and hurlers in the county of Galway. Galway are in the All-Ireland hurling final. Wonderful display by the tribesmen. These young men have come of age. Niall Healy, three-goal hero, goes out and joins in the celebrations. Tears of joy for David Collins from Liam Bellows and for Conor Hayes, who won all Ireland in 1980, 87 and 88. He captained the 88 side to victory. He's guided the Galway side to an All-Ireland final for the first time since 2001. The full-time score in Croke Park and this historic All-Ireland hurling semi-final. Galway 5-18, Kilkenny 4-18. An unbelievable match and a shock win for Galway. The men from the West were now on a roll and seeking their first All-Ireland since 1988 when their current manager, Conor Hayes, was captain. Hayes named the same team that had beaten Kilkenny. On the bench was Kevin Broderick, back from injury and raring to go. In the semi-final victory over Clare, John Allen made the hard calls and substituted Brian Corcoran and Ronan Curran. But both were back in the team for the All-Ireland Final. In all, Cork had 14 of the team that started the 2004 Final. The only change, seeing Pat Mulcahy replace Wayne Sherlock in defence. Tickets for the final were selling for up to €1,000 apiece on the black market. The hurling season was finishing in a frenzy. After two memorable semi-finals, a great final was in prospect.
let's take the uh, check on the teams. Once again, Cork will start with the same team that began against Clare. Ronan Curran will have felt some pressure after he replaced, was replaced in the semi-final. But the half-back line remains intact. And at the other end of the field, Brian Corcoran starts his fifth All-Ireland final. Remember, he missed the 2003 decider. But it's three in a row for Joe Dean, a fourth final in all. And the Cork Danger man has scored 13 points in All-Ireland finals so far. Well, there's a general contentment of the West so far. The No changes from the 15 that put Kilkenny out of the championship. It's a 21st championship game for cornerback Ollie Canning, while Fergal Healy and David Tierney are paired together in midfield for the third game running. And much attention up front will centre on the hat-trick hero of three weeks ago, Niall Healy. But as ever, the man to watch out for here is the wonderfully talented Damien Hayes, already a candidate, surely, for Galway's Hurler of the Year. Seamus Roach, the referee in charge. Huge sense of expectation. And uh, already it's hopping up down there, but like the semi-final, they're at it again before we can even get underway. And Seamus Roach again looking at his watch. And they're having little tussles everywhere and anywhere. In the end, common sense prevails. Match gets underway. It's the 117th All-Ireland Hurling Final. And it is Galway who play from left to right. If there is a light breeze out there, it favours Galway for the opening 35 minutes. Into the middle of the field here. Taking that ball away was Ollie Canning. Sending it along beyond Ger Farraher. Easy one for goalkeeper Donal O'Cusack to launch Cork's first attack down towards Kieran Murphy who switched across to left half forward there are several switches around that I can see already this is in towards Timmy McCarthy who's moved in towards the inside forward line one back there by David Collins swinging it away downfield for Galway in towards David Ford Runs on towards Niall Healy, struggling to get it up onto his stick. Farraher comes to his aid. 45 metres out from the court goal. Looking for the opening score of the match. Has he got it? Not quite. He went close. Over 82,000 people are here. And that's going to be a free in. There was a push. The push was by the very talented Ollie Canning. And it's going to be Ben O'Connor who will take it. Well, he's giving it maximum care and maximum attention. Every opportunity could be crucial, and Ben has taken the first scoring opportunity, and Cork have taken the lead. That's a good puck out as far as Ger Farraher. Trying to get possession. Comes back here towards Jerry O'Connor. The man with boundless energy and great hurling skill. Down towards Brian Corker, and it peeled away from Tony O'Regan. Got inside his man, now going to try and make a better angle for himself. That's a great individual score by Corcoran. Twice has been the hurler of the year. That's Shane Cavanagh, number six, trying to get it up onto a stick, waiting for the corner man, Ollie Canning, to take it. Uh, off the stick in the end there of Shonogo Halpin, line ball to Galway. Richie Murray coming up to take this one, playing in his 14th championship match. Good ball in. Alan Kearns turns. That's the score Galway needed to settle them down after seven minutes. Good play by Kearns. Well, the puck out so far from Cork are long, all the way down into their half-forward line. None of the short stuff we've seen so far this season. That's Damien Joyce missing it the first time, getting it out here to Derek Cardiman. Off the stick there of Pat Mulcahy. Trying to deflect it away from the Galway forward. The tenacity of Niall Healy evident here. The diagonal ball across. Cork have been expecting that because that's been a Galway pattern all through this championship season. What a run to the centre by Tom Kenny. Letting it fly, going for it and getting it. Three points to one. Good ball down towards Niall Healy. But the break's been picked up by the Cork half-back line. Sean Halpin lashing it away down the field. Towards Corcoran, beautiful balance, what control. Three man outside, Niall McCarthy. That's a classic score. That's as good as you'll find anywhere. And they've taken it again very quickly. Three in a row now, and Cork were falling asleep somewhat. David O'Sullivan rises up to that long ball in from Hardy, and it comes back towards Jer Farraher. Quick as you like, Farraher crisply delivered it over the bar, and he's got two. 
and it's 6-3. I think it's interesting. We expected the card short game and the Galway more direct, and it's complete opposite. Galway are working short puckouts, and their midfielders are trying to go very, very deep, deep to create room for their half forward. So it's an interesting clash of styles, but it's completely different from what I expected. Brian Corcoran. Out to Niall McCarthy. He's got a man over. That was Ben O'Connor. Blocked down well by Ollie Canning. Coming in there like a truck was Shane Kavanagh. Linking up once again. Gibbler Sullivan. Back down defiantly. Runs all the way through dangerously in there. A chance here. And Ben O'Connor has scored. The opening goal of the game is Ben O'Connor's in the 16th minute. Well, the defence was in bits, and Ben was in for his third ever championship goal. Look at the amount of space. Galway were all over the place. From David O'Sullivan's long, long ball all the way through to Ben O'Connor, and he gleefully put it into the back of the net. Damien Hayes trying to touch it down, waiting for David Ford to come onto it. Now it's Alan Kearns. He's got a goal chance. Great save! Good save by Donald O'Cusack. Galway have it again, picking it up here with Sheriff Farragher. Blocked down by Shonor Rahalpin. Going back is Jerry O'Connor. Blocked down again by Farragher this time. Everybody putting their lives on the line, as it were. Brilliant. Totally committed play by both teams. But that is some few minutes. The court goal and a brilliant save at the other end immediately by Cusack. Galway, very game, very talented, very young side. Brian Corcoran to Ben O'Connor, who switched across, effortlessly struck, beautiful point. A goal and two for Ben O'Connor. Puck out taken quickly, went away down the field. That's going to be the Galway tactic. This is Damien Hayes. Hasn't scored so far, needs a bit of support. Coming through was David Tierney, and that's over the bar from Tierney. And it came from the very quick puck out by Liam Donahue to Derek Hardyman. At that time, Timmy McCarthy was going in on that. It's going to be a throw ball by the referee to end the uncertainty. Thumbs up from some young Galway fans and a Cork fan there as well. Now Damien Hayes swiftly delivered into Fergal Healy. The midfielder crisply strikes and puts it over the bar. His first. Towards Timmy McCarthy this time, taking it down, getting onto it himself. Up as far as Niall McCarthy, Cork's 40 yards man. Almost taken away from him by David Collins, but it's taken away by Derek Hardyman. Nicely inside here, broken down by Niall Healy, coming across as Brian Murphy at favours. Turf out of her. Got to be challenged by Ronan Collins, he's fouled, it's a free in. And it's a sure Galway chance of getting another point here. Was there a tangle of legs there? The referees having words anyway. And more than that, shown the notebook there to Ronan Curran. Well, it's a, it's a big game for Shane Resorts as well. I think in the semi-final between Kilkenny and Galway, he was accused maybe of losing a bit of control during the second half. But I've noticed since the start of the game, every sort of a person has been given frees. I, I felt myself there's been three or four frees during the first half that were very marginal, you know, they were just small enough clashes. Well, it's hard to see what that one was for, but anyway, Ger Farrer has put it over, he's got six points, and the uh, difference between the teams right now, just two points approaching the break. David Collins now. Both teams trying to get the rhythm going once again, that's a very good catch by Damian Hayes. Stopped. Hand pass laid off beautifully for Kearns, looking for the score, he's got it! Alan Kearns has got a second point. Jodine slips, and again it's Damien Joyce. This time he's left it behind to Timmy McCarthy, taking on Shane Kavanagh. McCarthy again, knocks it out of the bar! He's had enormous critics over the years, but Timmy McCarthy usually comes good in finals, and he's got two this afternoon from two shots. It's back down with Alan Kearns, taking on Ben O'Connor. Good return by Galway. Alan Kearns, a third point for him. Here's Alan Kearns, released outside here towards Fergal Healy. 
And Fergal Healy lets fly with accuracy. He's got a second. Two from two. Good shooting by the midfielder. And once again, there are two points between these teams. Alan Kearns giving it everything. Three points so far. Taking on David O'Sullivan. It's still Kearns trying to cut inside. Taking lots of steps. Referee says play on balls. Not lost in any case. In the end, Brian Murphy trying to wallop it out. Sean O'Gohalpin trying to get it up on his stick. Going past the 20-metre line. Under good pressure there from Richie Murray. Again, there's more pressure coming in. The little snapshot. The jump for joy. But where's it gone? It's dropped short. Davian Hayes thought he'd got a point. Cusack's long, long clearance out of defence. Runs all the way up to Ben O'Connor. And where it might have been a point at one end for Galway, it's a point for Cork at the other. Ben O'Connor now with a goal and four points. Damien Hayes is trying to go out into the half-forward line. It's like as if they've got four half-forwards at this stage. Brian Murphy has followed him. Ger Farraher has got in full forward right now on Dermot O'Sullivan. Trying to make the switches and the changes. Jerry O'Connor has discarded the green helmet. Up towards Joe Dean. Trying to get more into the match. Good ball in towards Timmy McCarthy. Taking on David Collins. Collins is dead as a quark man. But very much they're all supporting Galway this afternoon, I'm sure. In the Collins household. Here comes Brian Corcoran. That's going to land over the bar. He's got a second. Brian Corcoran from Aaron Zone. Hand pass by Niall Healy. It was Damien Hayes who was trying to steal inside. He's still there, tenaciously in. That's a good opportunity for Richie Murray. Stopped on the goal line. And it's a goal for Galway. A point between them. In the 49th minute. This is it again here. Richie Murray was coming in. Come off, comes off the goalkeeper's legs. And it was prodded in by Damien Hayes under the falling body of Dermot O'Sullivan. Tom Kenny trying to take it. John Gardner next in, ahead of Richie Murray. Getting there ahead of Alan Kearns also. Up as far as Ben O'Connor, rolls it up. Jersey pulled by Hardyman, goes through. Still trying to get through. Difficult, impossible. And David Tierney has it back once again for the tribesmen, all the way through to Ger Farraher. Only two between them. Farraher has an opportunity to cut it to one. He's done it! One point, the margin. I think Ger Farraher has proven the last day and again today that it's not just a free taker. Super score there out in front. And I think that extra bit of room inside, you talked about the two-man full forward line earlier, it's creating space for the Galway attack and they look more dangerous. And bear in mind, Dermot O'Sullivan's on a yellow. Tom Kenny's flying. He's got a third. Good score. Ben O'Connor. Cutting it up towards Joe Dean. Doesn't run for him. Runs instead for Ollie Canning. Is it running for Galway right now? Not a good clearance. Straight to Ben O'Connor. And Ben has knocked it over the bar. A goal at five for Ben O'Connor. Coming across here is John Gardner, getting there ahead of his man. That's not the best of clearances. It favours Derek Hardyman. Nobody near him. He's got a player loose inside. Oh, dear. Is it going to go over? It is. Great point by Derek Hardyman. Farah in there with the 50-50 clash. It comes back to Pat Mulcahy. Feeding it beautifully ahead here to Ben O'Connor. Cork swing forward, playing in the centre of the field. That's brilliant accuracy. Everything he has struck, he has put it over the bar or into the goal. A goal and six. David Collins playing well at left half back for Galway. Towards Kevin Broderick, it's stolen away from him there by Brian Murphy. Whipped forward by Jerry O'Connor. And that lands over the bar. That could be a winner. Galway needing scores quickly. That's in towards Kevin Hayes. Just in the match, about 30 seconds. Back to Ger Farah. Nobody near him initially. Going into challenge there, Ben O'Connor. Slightly off balance as Ger Farah was hitting that one. And it's two shots now that Galway have hit in the last couple of minutes that have been well off the target. Cork playing within themselves, playing a nice compact game. And they're leading by four. 
Yeah, and that's the way they played all year, Joe. In every match they played, they've just done enough. And, you know, you always feel there's a bit more in the tank if they need to pull it out. Five points from their two midfielders today. Tom Kenny with three, Jerry Connor with two. And Galway have got three points from their midfielders. Eight points from the middle of the field. So it shows you the type of loose game. Here's Ben O'Connor again with another one. Superb. 1-7 from Ben O'Connor. A match-winning performance by the O'Connor twins. Damien Hayes here, going short to Kevin Broderick. They gave a very good account of themselves for a long, long time. And right now they're looking for a goal chance. David O'Sullivan surrounded by three goalway players. Can they get it in? They're still trying to get there with Richie Murray and uh, Donald O'Cusack on the ground. Is he was he lying on the ball? Yeah, that's a penalty. It's a very clear rule now, Jerry. You know, if you lie on the ball, it's a free. Uh, that should be a penalty. It should be, opinion, especially yeah. where it happened that time. He's going to bring it out and throw it in. And, uh, that's the old rule, but in, in about two or three years ago, that was changed. If you lie on the ball, it's a free. Right. Should have been a penalty. Stopped again by the goalkeeper. Good stop by Donald O'Cusack. Some late, late scares for Cork from a very gallant Galway team. And we have nearly played the two minutes of stoppage time in this sixth ever meeting of Cork and Galway in the final. It's looking like Cork's 100% record against Galway is going to be maintained in finals. Still Galway looking for something. A referee calling for the ball. I think it's over. It is, and Cork are still the champions. Cork retain the Liam McCarthy Cup. John Allen and his selectors have done the job. The county board wanted continuity after Donald O'Grady stepped aside at the end of the 2004 season. John Allen, one of the selectors then, came in. They maintained that sense of continuity. They came in as favourites. They justified favouritism. And at Croke Park, they have seen off the challenge of Galway. Final score of the All-Ireland Final. Cork 121, Galway 116. As Sean O'Gohalpine raised the Liam McCarthy Cup, all thoughts were on Cork going for three in a row in 2006. A great finish to a season that got better with every game. Cork victorious after a mighty struggle. We witnessed the pitch battles, the drama, and most of all, celebrated the skill of these extraordinary GA players who play for their parish, their managers, and their county with pride and entertain hundreds of thousands of fans every summer. We salute you all. Roll on, Liam 06.